Hey guys, it's Mei Mei, and today we start part one of our five-part ATC series, where I'm going to do five different ATCs for you guys all this week. So today's video is Monday. You'll have one Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday we'll do our regular live show, and then you'll have Friday and Saturday. So you'll get five videos of ATCs. So today what I want to do is I want to show you a way to make a lot of ATCs using one sheet of paper and kind of a overlapping stamping technique. It'll make sense as we go. You remember how I showed you in our first video where we talked about the ATC challenge we're doing this week? I showed you how to uh, use one piece of paper and get 10 ATCs from it. That's what we're gonna do. However, sorry I'm having to tell you this before we start working, but however, I want my ATCs to have a, a border around them. So my ATC needs to be three and a half by two and a half, but I want this piece to be just slightly smaller so I can have a border, right? So instead of cutting this at three and a half and then two and a half, like I showed you in that video, here's what I'm gonna do. And I'm not gonna cut right now. I'll show you why. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this page. I'm gonna mark it at three and a quarter, right here, instead of three and a half, okay? And then I'm gonna come beside this and I'm gonna mark the next one at two and a quarter, and two and a quarter. Now the reason is, again, I'm bringing this in a little bit so I can have a mat or an um, edge around my um, ATC cards. Oh, it'll make sense, it will make sense, I promise. Now what I'm gonna do is at the top here, I'm going to mark this every two and one quarter inches. It's, it's a quarter of an inch smaller than an AT, an AT, an ATC. So right there, and then right here, and then here. And I'm doing it this way. You could go down your ruler and add it all up and all that, but y'all know I don't do math. So I'm just moving my ruler, moving my paper every two and one quarter inches, like so. Here will not be able to be used. It's two inches. I really could use it if I wanted to. We'll see, we might. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is using my mark, this is that first mark I made, the very first one, okay? And using my cutting mat to help me line this up, I'm just lining up on my cutting mat. I'm going to draw a line from that first mark to this opposite line here at the bottom. Now I'm doing this without getting over the top. I'm using the camera to kind of help me line it up. Um, you'll be able to get over the top of yours and you won't get your head in your camera unless, of course, you film. All right, I'm going to make this line. Boom. Okay. On this side are going to be ATCs. Over there are going to be ATCs. Now let's do this. Let's move my next mark into place which is right there. And I'm using my cutting mat again to help me line all this up. Okay, a little bit, I'm being real picky. All right, and then I think I'm gonna use the beveled edge. I like to trace on the beveled edge better. All right, I'm gonna use my cutting mat to help me do this, looking at my camera to line everything up. All right, and then unline. And now I need to do the same thing with this line. So using my paper, I mean using my Cutting mat to help me get these straight. That looks pretty good at the bottom. Let's do our line. Looks pretty good here. I'm not doing perfection. It's just gonna help me get close. All right, so what we've got here is we have ATCs in here and ATCs in here. Now what I need to do is these pieces I did here, I'm only gonna trace them. Let me put them on my cutting mat. I'm only gonna trace them across to the three inch mark, but using my cutting mat to get my paper straight, I can turn this now where I can see it, and use my ruler straight. You see what I'm saying? You can also use your T-square for this. So I'm only gonna draw to here, okay? That's an ATC blank. See, will it start to make sense now? You just have to stick with me through my madness. It makes sense eventually. Now I'm lining this one up. I'm gonna line my ruler up over there. And doing this, there's another ATC. Okay, and then I'm gonna line this up again. Get it nice and straight, come down here to this one. Again, overkill maybe, but if you spend the time here getting this straight, you're gonna be real happy about what we're gonna do after this. All right, so this one, one more here. Get my paper nice and lined up, like so. Line my ruler up. And so, one, two, three, four 
and this piece of one left over. Too small for what I want to do here, but it's no big deal. I can use it somewhere. All right, now on these lines that I have going this way, these ATCs will not go in this same orientation. They will go in this orientation. So I'm going to measure every three and one quarter inch down this line and see how many I get here. I should get three. I think I will. So three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Yep, one more. Three and a quarter. Just like that. Now then, for the hardest part, I'm gonna line this up here just like on, on my, just like we did a moment ago, okay? Using my cutting mat, I'm using lines on the side. I'm gonna come to this mark, and I'm gonna use the side marks here. See how it's hanging over the edge? Use those side marks to help me get it nice and straight. Look at my camera, that looks good. And then I'm gonna trace from one side through to the other. And I technically could keep going because this is gonna be a wasted strip or a scrap strip, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna do it like that. And I have my drink over here. I don't wanna get my paper wet. <laughs> I'm working too hard to get my paper wet. I'll tell you all that. Okay, so. Do my this. And then trace. I promise once this is done, you'll see the reason for the work. It'll make things so easy in what we're gonna do. All right, I'm gonna do the last little line right here and then we'll do the next step. Okay, so turning this sideways so you can see the whole thing. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just like I showed you when we cut it. But I didn't wanna cut these yet because I want to do some stamping that goes across the line. All right, so like here, I'm gonna use a stamp that goes on either side. So when I cut these apart, I'm decorating two ATCs at one time. Does that make sense? Well, let me show you what the stamp set. So the stamp set I wanna use is this one. It's called Up, Up and Away. I think it is so cute for ATCs. And I want to stamp the balloon across both sides like this. So I get half the balloon over here and half the balloon over here. So I'm getting on two different um, images. So. Here's what I did. This is one that we have to you know, stack up. So this is one that I've got completed for me to look at. So I just measured from the top to the bottom of this stamp, and it is just at three and a quarter. And if you remember, that's how tall my line is here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp the basket first and work my way up. And that way, if any of the balloon is hanging off, it's hanging off the top and it'll be okay. Also, just because I'm mass producing doesn't mean these will be exactly the same. Even though the colors I'll use and all that kind of stuff will be the same, I'm doing this by hand. There's no way they'll all be exactly the same. But I'm going to stamp this basket at the bottom most point overlapping that line. So now I have half my basket on one ATC and half on the other. I didn't cross over here because this is going to be ATC also, but you could totally take this off, you know, and work it that way as well. All right, let's ink it again. And this guy and this guy work together. Now I need to come here and do this one. Two ATCs and two ATCs. Now I'm gonna turn it and work these guys. You can totally just do one ATC at a time. You do not have to mass produce them. But I'm hoping to be able to get some, um, enough to be able to add to some of your packages. If you're participating in our March Motivation non-swap, there's a video for it. I'll link it for you guys below so you can see what I'm talking about. If you're participating in that, I'm gonna, randomly put some of my ATCs in. So some of you guys will receive them depending on how many I can get made between now and the end of April. All right, so there's the basket on um, five different spots, which will get me 10 ATCs. All right, let's go to the next one. So for this hot air balloon, this little piece matters, the distance between the balloon and the basket. What I've done here is I've laid this piece in to kind of show me where I need to stamp it. But this is the actual stamp I need to use next, okay? So it'll be the one that goes right about here. So what I'm gonna do is just lay this and give myself a rough pencil mark estimate of where not to go too high. And I'm just gonna let that be my guide and use that all the way across. And then I may have to do it again here, but it'll be all right, I'll show you. I'm gonna use a charming pink for this one. So I'm gonna ink this guy up. And then using that pencil mark as my rough estimate and crossing this over, in the middle of that line, I'm gonna stamp that down. 
Notice how I let this sit. I want the ink to transfer, so I'm not stamping and lifting up immediately. Let the ink transfer. It's fine to let it sit there. You get a much better image that way. So there are two. Now, we're going to just estimate the other one. If you need to measure every time, measure. Feel free. I'm just going to kind of let this be my guide. Look, I can even do this. I can even take my ruler and kind of just estimate where that one is right there. And then just kind of put this one here, like so. Stamp that down. Does not have to be perfect, just close. All right, so I'm working two ATCs. Let's turn it. Now here, I'm gonna do that test again. So I'm gonna bring this little piece over. I'm gonna lay my basket where it should go, which is about like that, okay? And then I'm going to know, basically, where to stamp this. So I inked it up, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab this, holding that about where it goes, and I'm just gonna stamp it down. Just let that ruler move that out of the way. If I'm not exactly perfect, again, I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not gonna sweat it. All right, so there's that one. Now let's do the next one. I'm gonna lay it where it goes, with it on my ruler like that ink this guy up. Isn't there always like, you know, necessity is the mother of invention? Look, now we have like a stamp handle. All right, so I'm gonna put this, hover it where it goes, bring this guy out, sit this guy down. There's another two. Okay, same thing again. Okay, now I can build around that. I'm perfectly fine, that's all the kind of work around I'm going to have to do. Now I'm going to use the color Warm Breeze, which is absolutely a gorgeous blue color, and I'm going to do my second stamp with Warm Breeze. So I have a red and a blue striped balloon, and I cannot get over the top. I'm going to place this and look at the camera so I can try to get close. Let that sit. If I'm off a little bit, the white stripes just kind of make it brighter. So I'm not going to stress. Do you see I have those little white stripes? They just look brighter to me. So I'm going to leave them there, keep going. And some of them will have those little white stripes and some won't. If you can get over the top, you can do away with that. But I cannot put my head in the camera. So I'm doing it by feel. Oh, that one was really good. All right, let's do this last one on the bottom. If you end up getting one of these ATCs, you'll know which one is which based on how my stamping goes. Hmm, better. Okay, let's go to these. Another thing you can do is use a positioner. Use like your um, press. I'm just using the stamp block, but if you use the press, you can really, you know, move it around and get it right where it goes. Oh, I did not ink that one up well. There we go. Line it up. Stamp it down. Perfect. So see, we're getting all these ATCs done all at one time. All right, I'm going to keep building and just let you guys kind of watch me finish the stamping. If I find anything I need to tell you, I'll cut in and tell you.
So do you see what I'm doing here? I'm crossing over, but I'm moving these around because I'm gonna use both of my clouds. So I don't want them to land in exactly the same spot. So I'm gonna come down here. Now here's the other cool thing. Because I'm not really using this piece right here, I can still stamp over this side. But if you find that you need to not, like if you wanna use that piece too, you can always um, tape off any that you're not doing. And then you still can do multiples at a time. Like for example, I'm gonna run into that here. We'll tape that off in a second. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and do these side pieces that I know I can get done. It's still so much faster than trying to do one little piece at a time and using your positioner or what have you. So let's get some tape. So I decided to even cheat it even more. I'm not gonna use tape. I don't wanna waste any tape. I don't wanna take a chance of tearing anything I've done. I'm gonna lay my little piece over here. You could use a scrap piece of paper. Just gonna lay it just like this. We're just gonna see if this won't work. I think it will. All right, so I'm gonna ink this guy up again. This is a laminated sheet of cardstock. That's all that is. And the lamination is what is easy to wipe off. So that's why it's really cool to have. Look, that works perfect. So there's one. Let's cut out here and do two. Oops, that one's also great. I'm just gonna go back over it. I went a little quick on that one. Did y'all see me jump up a little too excitedly? Press a little more. That's better. I'm not gonna stress about it because I'm gonna do something else that'll probably cover that up in a minute anyway. Now what I can do is with this and my trusty little microfiber cloth, clean that off. I have worn this microfiber cloth out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get the other cloud. come back in with some of these cute little pieces where I can put little dots wherever these little lines meet the uh, balloon, like little knots that have tied them on. So I'm just using a little stamp to do that. I'm gonna run through and do all of the lines on the inside and the two lines on the outside, I'm gonna use the little bow for. I think that'll be really cute. So just running around, stamping these guys. I'm not doing second generation. Notice how I'm inking every time. I want them to be very obvious. That's what, to me, these little parts of the stamp set are what, to me, give it all of its character is all the little pieces you add to it. So I'm inking every time. I'm not just doing one and then going to the next one because you just won't get the same look. And the harder you push this one, um, the chubbier your little dot is. Don't push too hard. Don't squish it too hard. Just get you a nice full little dot there. to use the little star and I know there wouldn't be stars in the sky in the daylight or in the daytime so everywhere this little grid at the top touches I'm gonna put a little star I just think they're cute and I'm not putting a sentiment in the middle of this um, balloon like we created this stamp set for because I'm gonna be cutting that in half so rather than put a sentiment there I just thought this to be cute to give a little something extra little extra um, design. This would also be really cute if you wanted to heat emboss. Um, you could heat emboss these little stars in like gold. That'd be super cute. But doesn't that just add something to our balloon? I just think it's cute. So I'm gonna do that to all of them. See why I like these blocks from Fiskars? By holding them with both hands, I eliminate at least 50% of my chance of dropping my stamp as I'm going, because I'll get in a hurry. And I have been known to use one hand and throw my stamp across my project, and then I've either ruined my project or I've got ink I've got to disguise or something like that. But being able to hold it with both hands at least gives you 50% more insurance you're not gonna do that.
think that's all of the stamping I'm going to do on the background itself. Now what I want to do is cut these apart and do some inking because I think that'll make it really cute too. So I'm going to get my trimmer. And now's why we did these lines. So all we have to do now is put the pencil mark into our trimmer and trim that pencil mark. And I'm going to take my time and try to trim right on it. Okay. So I'm going to come over here, trim this guy on the pencil mark. This is that piece that was scrap, but you could use it for something else too. And I'm going to put this one in here and trim it. This is where we see our first cut apart ATC. Look at that. Isn't that cute? And let's do the next one. This is the fun part. Now there's one that goes in this direction. I love that. And look, two. And now I'm going to trim the long lines and then the short lines. Now what I'm going to do is use a tumbled glass distress oxide. I'm going to lay these guys down. Now, if I have a good bit of the pencil showing, because this one does, I'm going to go ahead and erase that with my mono sand eraser really quick. Um, the mono sand eraser actually erases my pencil better than my pencil eraser does. Now, what I'm doing here is going to make all the difference in the world. I did one just to sample and make sure this is the color I wanted to use, and it is. This is Tumble Glass Distress Oxide, and what I'm doing is kind of patting off on my little laminated sheet and lifting up and hitting that edge. Now, the darker the edge, the prettier it is, in my opinion. You can pull in, but that dark edge looks so pretty to me. So I'm just gonna come back to this one. Now, did you see what I almost did? I almost put my finger right in the middle. I don't wanna do that, because knowing me, I'm gonna have ink on my finger. So I'm taking a piece of paper and putting it there so I don't take a chance of getting ink right in the middle of my pretty white uh, ATC. Then I'm gonna turn it, do that again. And I really like the dark blue edge there. I like how pretty that is. I'm not coming in very far. I just like how pretty that is on that edge. I can always come in further if I want to. If I want to take this um, pretty clean uh, distress pad, start from the back, and then just kind of work my way in, I can always do that. But it's your card, your ATCs, do what you want. Isn't that cute? I love that. All right, I'm going to ink all of them, and we'll get back together. So I'm going to use two of the sentiments from that stamp set, and I'm going to name this series Up, Up, and Away, this series of um, ATCs that I've made here, these 10. So the first little sentiment's going to go right here, Up, Up, and Away. Oh my goodness, I'm in love, I'm in love. All right, so then the next one, isn't that fresh? And the next sentiment I'm going to use is going to say, The Sky's the Limit, but each one is probably gonna end up in a different spot based on where it fits. So this one fits really well down here. The sky's the limit. Then this one may fit in the same spot. And it can hang over, it can you know stamp on top of something, it doesn't matter. I just wanna make sure I have that sentiment on there as well. I did that one on the balloon and off. I like that, I thought that would be cute. And that This is a whole example of what an ATC is. It's an example of your artwork. And everybody knows I love to stamp. And this is a great way to share your art. Another thing, because I know some of you are watching today and you're like, but I don't want to do ATCs. I don't want to do a swap. None of this sounds interesting to me. Think about this. 
You can do the same thing with card making. Instead of drawing the size of ATC cards on your paper, draw the size of the card you wanna make and then do your stamping on and off just like we did and then cut it all apart and you could get four cards from one A2 or from one um, piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Doing the same thing, doing all your stamping at one time, you can get it all done exactly the same. So just an idea. Um, also, these can totally be mounted to a card. Totally, they would be precious. That's my stamping done. These are so cute. I think they are anyway. All right, do you remember that I showed you how to cut your ATC bases from some cardstock in our other video? These are the pieces I cut and I wanna make sure I use all of these. So my first series is gonna be mounted directly to these guys. So I'm gonna glue these straight down and I wanna say this to you. This is not chipboard. I'm not using chipboard. These are just cardstocks. This is an 80 pound cardstock that I stamped on today from Brutus Monroe, which is nice and thick cardstock. And this one feels like about a 65 pound, this brown. I'm not exactly sure who made this brown. It's just from my stash. But look at that, that's perfect. And it'll be nice and thick for an ATC. All right, I'm gonna glue all these guys on. Now it's time to fill out our backer. And I'm gonna use my red pen for this. And the first thing I want to do is I want to title them. So these are up, up, and away. So I'm gonna write that here under the title. Now you may be wondering where to get this sheet. This is a free printable that we created for you that I will link for you guys below. Um, it's on a blog post where you can go get the free printable. You do not have to use this to participate in our swap. I know some of you guys have a stamp, which I'm thinking about making for you guys, like doing one um, in our line to have a little ATC stamp since we're gonna be doing these. But some of you ha guys have your own backer you wanna use and that's fine. We just made this in case you were interested. Then you'll put your name. You guys wanna sit here and watch me sign my name a thousand times. Here's a little bit of trivia. You'll enjoy this. So my name is one word, May May. So it's not double capitalized. A lot of times people think it is, but it is and it's all one word. And guess who never spells it right? My mama. Whenever she writes May May, she always puts capital M's and it's, it's all, I go, mom, it's all one word. She's like, to be honest, that's not how you spell your name at all. I'm like, I know mom, this is my nickname and this is how you spell it. All right, so there's my name. So you'll put your name and then the date. And today is 316 when I'm filming this. Now the number, okay? So these are the first ones I've made and they are part of this series. I'm gonna number these um, one of. So this is gonna be one of 10, two of 10, three of 10, four of 10, five of 10. Does this make sense? This way, when the person gets it, they'll know there's only 10 that look like this are made in this series, and they'll know which one of those they got. It's kind of cool to do it that way. Treat it like actual art. It is. You created it. Now, I've got to print one more sheet so I can do my 10th one, but I just wanted to get this done while we're sitting here. And then my state is Alabama. We decided to add the states because we thought it would be really neat when you guys are getting these in our non-swap. <laughs> <laughs> when you're getting these um, sent to you, it'd be neat to see where they came from. I like that too, because I put them on my wall in my office, and I think they're really cool. I think it'd be cool to kind of cover my office wall with um, ATCs. So because of that, if you guys are doing ATCs in our swap, and you're doing three for the swap, if you want to send me one, you can include it in your envelope and just leave a note that one is for me, and I will be putting them in my office as well. A lot of you guys said I wanna send one to you while I'm doing it, and I would love to have it because I think they look really cool on my office wall. Okay, so there's nine done. I'll have to go do one more, but let's cut these apart and glue them on. So when Mandy did this little sheet, she left a little white line down the middle or a little clear line. You just line that up on your trimmer and cut that apart. And you can put these on cardstock if you want. You can print these out on cardstock. 
There's not really a need to though, because I'm gonna be gluing this to my cardstock. So that'll make them sturdy enough. And we tried to do this so you wouldn't have to do too much work on your trimmer. So you could lay this down real easy. Here's a tip. If you're gonna use copy paper like I am, sink your blade in the middle and go up and go down and you'll get a much better cut than trying to start from the end um, and cut. See, for example, if I were to lay this here and then push my blade up, I could get that ruffling instead of cutting. Sink your blade to the top or in the middle and then do it like that and you'll get a much cleaner cut. Now, did you also notice that I wrote on these before I glued them onto my ATCs? That's on purpose. If I mess them up, I'd rather mess it up here than while it's attached. So all I have to do now is glue this little guy to the back. You could use sticky tape here if you wanted to since we're using um, copy paper, but I'm just gonna use a super thin bead of glue. Super thin. I know it looks like it's more than I'm using. It's not, I promise. And then this goes right on to the back of your ATC, all the way to the edge. You can trim that differently if you don't want it to go all the way to the edge, but I think that's super cool. So that is a completed ATC. The art on the front, the info on the back. All right, I'm gonna put these on and then we will, I'll show you all of them completed. I decided to put my glue onto my ATC versus my paper because I think I have an easier time of laying it down. That's much easier. So there we are guys, all 10 of my very first ATCs. I love how these turned out. Look how cute they are on the back. I'm in love. I cannot wait to see who gets these and it will be one of you guys who participates in our swap. If you would like to participate in our swap, there'll be links in the description of this video so you can go watch the original video that talks about how our swap is going to work. You can get all the information from our blog post. You can get this free printable for the back of your cards. So much more. Be sure to open the description box and check that out. If you're making ATCs, especially if you're using my stamp sets, I love when you guys do that. Head over to my website, which is called maymaymadeit.com and share your crafts in our customer gallery. We love to see them. Hey, thanks so much for watching today, guys, and I'll see you again tomorrow for more ATCs. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.